Welcome to my channel. My name is Jessica, but everyone calls me Jess. Um, so I recently picked up the Natasha Denona Mini Glam Palette, her brand new little uh, five pan palette. You do have two mattes in here. You have three shimmers. This shimmer at the end here is kind of a shimmer mixed with glitter. The other two are just straight shimmer. There is no glitter in them. So if you are curious how they apply to the eye, if you want to see some swatches, you want to see a little funny mishap where I just totally did an entire outro and forgot eyeshadow. Not eyeshadow. <laughs> if you want to see a mishap where I forgot all about mascara until the very end, then you're definitely going to want to keep watching because teacher's brain on winter break, you know. We're smart people on winter break. <laughs> but if you have a fair skin tone, neutral, cool undertone, and you want to see how they apply, swatch on somebody's skin tone like yourself. Or if you just want to hear my general thoughts and see if I look I created. If you, you know, have a little bit of a different skin tone, it'll obviously look a little different on you depending your undertone and your depth of color. You know, if you're not as pasty wet as myself. <laughs> um, but if you are interested in seeing how I got this look using the Natasha Denona Mini Glam Palette, then just keep on watching. All right, so let's dive into the look using the Natasha Denona Mini Glam Palette. As you can see, the outer, you know, packaging um, tells you what colors are inside. So I kind of like that. You can see before you actually open it. Um, and I do find that they're pretty true to, to color. So let's open this up. And as you can see, you know, we have that matching on the inside. Very nice. So to start off my look, I'm going to go in with this shade right here. It looks pretty much like nothing in the pan, but I do find on the eyes it translates really well. Definitely a great transition color. I'm going in with my Morphe M504 and I always tap off excess. This palette doesn't have a mirror, which is the only like downsize to like the super slim packaging, but I will use my bronzer that I used today, the Charlotte Tilbury Bronze and Glow, and dip into that and just start to work that color right into the crease. And I always, no matter what palette I use, I always start slowly and build. And I find that these layer really nicely on top of each other. These mattes are super buttery so they layer very nicely so i'll gradually build that up into the crease if you hear anything my little her child is about to jump up on the bed with me <laughs> or maybe she'll stay at my feet but i'm going to start to work that same color into the outer v and again into the crease just building it up to the intensity that I want. So as you see, you can really do like a really light wash of color, but you can build it up till it's a little pigmented. Maggie, everyone, <laughs> making lots of noise. She's mad I'm not playing with her right now. I do really love this color. It's a very neutral toned, transitions shade. I wouldn't say it's super taupey, but it does have a little warmth to it. At least on my skin tone, you can see there is that warmth. Um, if you were more warm toned, it might pull a little more cool tone. On my skin, this palette does pull a little more warm tone just because I am pretty neutral cool. So keep that in mind if it looks pretty cool on some people. If you're more uh, cool toned, it's going to pull a little bit more warm um, as it does on myself, but I do love it and I do find it's pretty neutral, a true neutral shade that doesn't pull orange. I'm then going into the uh, deep chocolatey matte color here. I guess they do have <laughs> names, but yeah, I'm being lazy. So 
the only deep chocolatey shade in the palette. And I'm going in with my Real Techniques. If I could read, I'm blind. Beige Shadow Brush. It's just a smaller, um, kind of slightly flat, but I really like it with this, with deeper shades. Going to pick it up again, tap off the excess. And I'm going to start to place that in my outer V. And as you can see, you know, it does pack a punch. So I always recommend tapping off the excess and slowly building. It is easier to add product than take it away after you've added way too much, at least in my experience. <laughs> Pick up a little bit more and start to layer it again on the outer V area. Take the remaining product, I'm not dipping in again, just take that remaining product and start to drag it into the crease for a little bit more definition. I do find these just blend out so nicely and so buttery. Pick up a little bit more Really start to emphasize that V shape. And kind of drag it along the lash line. Going back into that lighter matte shade here on the Morphe M504, just slightly picking up a little bit more, always tapping off that excess. And slowly, um, very lightly, I'm holding the end of the ferrule to have that light touch lightly blending those two together so everything is very diffused. It just adds that little bit more softness that we want with the look since it is a natural glam. <laughs> then going to go in with the middle shimmer shade here. Um, it's kind of got that hint of green to it if you can see. Um, I don't feel like it pulls very green on the eyes, but it does have a bit of that like yellowy undertone. And I'm picking it up on my Sigma Exact Blend E32. It's just a flat brush, very lightly. And I'm going to kind of tap it over the outer, not going all the way to the outer V, but slightly over it to about the middle of the eye and just tapping it. I do find that this shade has um, more of a punch if you use your finger, but I'm not going for a super dramatic look. And I wanna show you how it applies with the your brushes. Then I'm going to go in with the shimmer shade here, the more golden-y one on my Sigma E25, just to kind of another flat brush that's great for kind of packing on those type of shadows. Again, always tapping off that excess. And you know, you can see we have that first shimmer shade, you know, about to the middle. I'm going to start on the inner corner and work my way and just gently blend those two kind of in the center where they meet. And I'm just going to tap over the center. We don't wanna take away any of that color from the other shimmer shade, but we do want to blend them. So I'm just kind of tapping to blend in the middle. And as you see, all of those shades just really blend super nicely together. For the lower lash line, I'm just going to kind of brush off the excess shimmer um, of my Sigma Exact Blend E32. And I'm going to pick up the light matte shade here and start to run that under the lower lash line. I never go all the way to the inner corner of my lower lash line. I do find that it kind of closes off my eyes. So if you have smaller eyes, uh, stay kind of like on the outer three fourths if you have that problem like I do. And I'm going to connect it to that outer kind of slight wing we created. Not a wing, but you know, a oh, little sleeping Maggie. There we go. 
she is very tired. We had a very long week over the holidays in Wisconsin with all of our family. So she is very happy to be home and in her own bed. <laughs> I'm then going in with the deeper matte shade on my Morphe M213. Ever so slightly, probably just on the outer third here. Picking it up just on the tip and dusting off the excess. And I'm going to keep this rather close close to the lash line. Just to add a little bit more depth on that lower lash line. And as always, connecting it to the outer portion of the top lid. <laughs> whatever that part is called. You know what I'm saying, connect it. Then going to go back in, no added product on my E32, um, the one that we did the initial shade with on the lower lash line and just ever so lightly, barely touch, but just kind of blend those two together to have no harsh edges. I'm then going to take that last uh, shimmer shade over here the more pinky toned one on my finger and pop it on the inner corner for a little added brightness. I do find that this one has a little bit of um, glitter in it, it appears. And this one does have fallout, so I do recommend using your finger with this one. Um, you get a lot less fallout with your finger than with a brush. And just kind of put it on the upper and bottom little area there for a little added pop. So here we have the finished eye look using the mini glam palette. As you can see, this is a pretty simple everyday type look. This is something I would wear every day. Um, but you can use, you know, the deeper, more of the deep shades. Uh, these two shades right here and really make it a little bit more exaggerated if you want to. Um, but I just kind of like this look for more of an everyday. I saw this palette and I thought such a great everyday palette. So that is what I wanted to share with you guys because that's what I would pretty much use it for. <laughs> so there is that finished look. Everything blends so seamlessly, is so smooth and buttery. I love the shimmers. If you want more of a pow, as I said, definitely go in with your finger and you definitely get more of a pow. Um, I have been playing with this for a few days. Um, so if you want more of a gentle everyday look, use a brush, use your finger for more of a in your face shimmer. Um, and they look even more wet when you use your fingers. So, so the Natasha Denona mini glam palette, is it worth it? If you are somebody who wears neutrals all the time, love a good neutral quick eye look. I don't think this will disappoint you. I saw it um, posted on Natasha Denona, Denona's Instagram. Um, and then, you know, a couple days later, obviously it released in Sephora. I picked this up immediately. Usually I'm one to add to cart and let it sit for, you know, a week, two weeks, three weeks to really make sure I want it. Um, but I picked this up literal day one that it came out. I believe it was like either New Year Christmas Eve or Christmas Day <laughs> and I bought it immediately. So I've had a little bit of time to play with this fun guy. Um, I do get the like flash two day shipping or whatever. Um, so I've had some time to play with this. I really love it. I'm somebody who loves neutral toned everyday basic boring shadows. Um, and as you can see, we can get a very nice everyday type look, very easy. I am again, fair skin tone. So if you are much deeper than me, I, I don't know how, you know, this first transition shade will look on you. On me, it does pull, I'm very uh, neutral, cool undertone with my skin. So this palette, I don't find pulls cool toned. I know it was advertised, you know, cool toned looks. I do find that these have a bit of a yellow base to them. So they do pull a little bit more warm on somebody with a cool undertone. You know, if you're more warm, these will definitely be more cool toned for you. But overall, I think it's very 
neutral. It's a very neutral palette, but I do find this shade pulls a little bit, has that yellow undertone to it, but I do really love it. It's something different that I don't really have in any of my other palettes. The deep chocolate shade blends beautifully. You can pack it up for a more of a punch, or you can really just lightly brush it on and have that slight definition for an everyday basis, which is what I love. And sometimes these shades can be really hit or miss with their blending capabilities. So I do love that both of these mattes are super buttery. The shimmers are gorgeous. I do find the more pinky tone shimmer at the end here. It does have like a little bit of glitter flex in it, so it does fall out. I recommend using your finger definitely with that one to apply it. It's a little bit less fallout or just wait and do your uh, do your eyes first, clean up the fallout and go about your day. And these two shades, I did not find, I have not found any fallout with these um, when I apply them either with my finger or with a brush. Now, if you really dug into them and really were trying to build them up, you might get a little bit of fallout. Um, but for what I use them for, you know, so sparingly and I always gradually build my shadows to the intensity. If you do that, you're not going to find any fallout with these two. This one, no matter what you do, you're going to get a little bit of glitter fallout. These two are just a straight shimmer, no glitter pigments inside of them. Um, I do really love them. They're so blendable, very buttery, such a good everyday palette. For $25, this is something you can travel with so easily. You know, it's the size of my hand. Very nice, portable. The only thing I wish it had a mirror, but again, if it added a mirror, you'd probably be adding to the price, which I like that it's $25. <laughs> and you'd also probably be adding to the bulkiness of the packaging. And I like how tiny and little this is. Very portable, easy to travel with, easy for every day. You know, you've got two mats. There's nothing more to think about. Throw one in the crease, one in the outer V, and then take your pick of shimmers to slap all over the eyes if you want, or, you know, mix all three shimmers like I did today. I do really love this one just with the two matte shadows and then all over the eye. Love that also for every day. Let's do a little bit of a swatch to see all these shades. So here you have all of the shades swatched. You can definitely see that they pull a little bit more warm on somebody with a more neutral, cool undertone, but not warm in a sense that this is a warm palette. These are very neutral, but I wouldn't call them cool, if that makes sense. So I do really love these shadows. You can see here kind of that yellow undertone I'm talking about. I feel like it translates more on the eyes, especially. This one is definitely more warm toned, but it's again, gorgeous. And here is that one um, shimmer on the end here. That's a little bit more pinky that has all of that glitter, but you can see it does have a beautiful reflect. And these are using the fingers. So I used brush on my eye. You can see the difference. It goes on much lighter with a brush. You can really pack on the pigment though, using your fingers with those shimmer shades. Overall, do I think it's worth $25? Absolutely, but I'm a lover of makeup <laughs> and especially neutral toned, easy eyeshadows. This is something you don't have to think about. Slap it on, call it a day. <laughs> um, if you are somebody who also loves neutral tones, I do not think you will be disappointed. But if you already have shades like this, do you need it? No. Is it fun to have and is it beautiful and buttery to use? absolutely so that'll be your choice <laughs> so i got all the way to the end of the video did my intro was sending a snap to a friend and looked in the camera and realized someone forgot mascara <laughs> I wondered why I looked a little off. Anyway, so there is the true finished look using mascara as well. As you can see, mascara ties the whole look together. <laughs> I am so 
so smart. Some days I literally walk out of the door without mascara on. If you feel me, you know. I forget brows a lot too. Mascara and brows are like the one thing I always forget and I always feel naked without them. <laughs> like, do you just feel naked with without your brows or like mascara? Is that just me? Anyway, <laughs> there's the uh, true finished look using the Natasha Denona Mini Glam. I hope you enjoyed my little tutorial and I'll hope you come you will come back next time for my next video. Um, I'm just somebody who loves to play with new makeup. Um, I'm not a makeup artist. I don't do this for a living. I'm a teacher. <laughs> this is just something that I do for fun. I love talking about makeup and my friends and family are sick of listening to me. So <laughs> if you also love to talk about makeup and your friends and family are sick of listening to you rave on and on about your new favorite things, then <laughs> I hope you'll stick around and enjoy, join me in our little makeup journey. So <laughs> Anyway, I hope you all had an amazing um, holiday. I hope you had an amazing new year and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.